Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the interbubs. This is Jonas underscore Jones. We're coming at you in another Minecraft episode from the Hermitcraft server. Yeah, I still rent intro, but I just love it. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of this season's ARG with Rendog and of course DocM77. This is episode 5 of this recap and explanation series and we have two new episodes to cover that were published during the same day. But if you haven't watched the previous episodes yet, make sure to do so and subscribe for more future content on this channel. Also, there are spoilers everywhere as we're looking into the episode 10 of Doc and 8 of Rand with much detail to find even the smallest clues. As some of you told me in the comments, not everyone watching this video watches Doc or Ren, which is where I thought I would maybe expand on the recaps and first briefly explain what Doc and Ren are doing in their episodes, even though not all of it is related to the ARG. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. With that out of the way, let's start with Doc, who starts his episode off with another barbecue, which this time is vegetarian. Their choice of food is therefore chorus fruit. Having a productive meaning for once, Ren and Doc decide to lay the foundations of their octagon shopping empire by grinding a full netherite block to place it on the island on which there is already the tank crane hybrid lock shop as a symbol to where the next episode will start the construction of the most epic shop Hermitcraft has ever seen. Even though those were only the words of two men, there is no doubt of Octagon being a success as Doc and Ren are dominating the market in logs, shulker boxes, chicken and eggs and goat and poles, even though those aren't for sale yet, but who knows? Doc buries the first diamond in a time capsule under one of the trees on the Costa beach of their barbecue area. Ren has a surprise for Doc, although the best one is yet to come. He had collected their screaming goat, Visionaire, from Jem, who had found it earlier while working on a base. Doc builds a wither cage containing two withers which are targeting a villager and making use of bubble columns to force the wither skulls to change their target, hitting a cobblestone wall above the villager that has been linked up to some cobblestone generators, rebuilding the wall in case of any damage. During the building process, one wither manages to escape the cage, but with the help of some Psycraft members, he gets to complete it without any additional losses. Let's move on to the adventure and the book from last episode. The book says, the new might save the old, and some coordinates. Ren and Doc invite the two new hermits, Palescent Moon and Gemini Tay, to go on an interesting adventure. The four get to the coordinates, finding a lectern and a mysterious looking entrance. The book says, there is no spoon.exe, and some sort of rule list, as it says, game out adventure, two teams, and the hint from earlier, the new might save the old. Interesting would also be the name of the book, but it isn't revealed in any of the Four Hermits episodes. Dropping down the hole in the ground, they find themselves swimming down an in deep set encased waterfall with a bunch of glowberries, at the end of it being another room. Everything is built out of deep slate, generating an interesting overgrown and moody atmosphere. There are two beds on either side of another lectern. The contained book features a list of commands that the four must execute. They must set their spawn and jump into a hole in the middle of the room, covered with a white map inside an item frame which is named System Start. In this dungeon, the hermits are treated as operating computers. The provided hint leads to a confusion. Loss is gain. They jump down at the same time and Ren gets killed by potion effects. I believe that the potions were meant to kill everyone. Doc immediately starts breaking the armor stands that are in the dark area at the bottom of the hole. During that process he accidentally kills Pearl through his sweeping attack. With some of Pearl's items and none of Rand's, Jem and Doc try to fly out out of the hole again. In a corner of the room now appears another hole with water at the bottom. After jumping down, the four hermits discover a new room with two red and two blue sets of leather armor, swords, food and another book. The next executable is teams, which tells them to form two teams to gear up and follow the color of their team. They put their gear in the barrels on either side of the cavern, which splits into two separate caves. After splitting up, Ren and Pearl take the red path, leaving Doc and Jem to the blue one. The two paths are identical, with the only change being the color. Their first puzzle is a maze, where one player sneaks on top and his vision is blocked by some grey maps in item frames, and the other player standing below and guiding them through the maze. Doc and Ren are guiding. The solution to the next room doesn't seem very clear at first, as both teams look around to find clues. 
The book in this room executes logicbreaker.exe, with the hint being fire from ice. Ren and Pearl are the first to figure out how the room works. There's a barrier on one side and some observers with unlit candles in front of them. As candles have the block state lit, which is a boolean, meaning that it can be true or false. By lighting the candles, the observers would send a one tick redstone pulse, triggering some sort of T flip flop and an ant gate, meaning that if both candles are lit, the door opens. Both teams are pretty fast at figuring out that the snowball projectile can be set on fire and since the 1.17 snapshot 20w45a candles can be lit using a burning projectile. With the help of a bunch of random items in the barrels, the two teams open the door with ease by placing some lava and throwing some snowballs through the lava and hitting the candles. The next part merges the two paths together, leading to the last room with a lava pit at the bottom and a floating island in the center of it. Pearl is the first one to enter the room and running towards the island, making use of the one block wide, white concrete bridge. As soon as she gets there, some redstone ore blocks on the carpets trigger a TNT which explodes right in the middle of the bridge, making it impossible to get back. Actually, it's a four block jump, so it would be possible to go back, but they don't. Unfortunately, by the time of recording, Pearl's episode on the adventure isn't out yet, which means that I have to rely on her reading the book and don't have any screenshots. The book is separated into two parts, the first page with red.exe and the second page with blue.exe. Here the original passage of Ren's video. Red.exe, all items are... There's no word for that. Okay. <laughs> right. Losing players are... There's also no word for that. Right. Disc read error, restart system. And there's another page, blue.exe, all items are returned. Winning players are deleted. All players receive system upgrade. This says, oh, there's a loading text. Those who have won are quarantined. Those who have lost must choose red or blue. Clearly, the blue team is a losing team, as they finished after red, so they get to choose between potentially losing their gear and their lives, and getting their items back but killing the winners, or receiving some sort of system upgrade. After discussing the situation, Jem goes to the red side and presses the button immediately, dispensing lava on top of her, burning her to death. Doc then presses the blue button, dispensing lava on top of Pearl's island, killing her. After that, the door next to the bed has opened, allowing the, the four to exit. They find a chest with all the lost gear, and a system upgrade turns out to be four netherite ingots, one for each of them. They also get a new book. Its binary code is 0101. 0000 and is a P. We now have the letters H E L P forming the word help. The book has one page and it says defrag.hermatrix.net and the date 4th of September 2021 at 7 pm BST. Ren then says that the text that looks like a link, by the way, the website doesn't exist, seems to be a Minecraft server IP. So I assume that there will be an event at that date on the server. The whole dungeon turns out to be a massive building underground. But that's about it for today's episode of this season's ARG. I guess we have to wait for the next one until the event. Let me know in the comments what you think about the recap at the start of the episode. But anyway, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. See you next time. I would have loved to stream that event here on YouTube, but unfortunately my laptop and internet connection aren't good enough to stream. I have tried to stream on Twitch once, but with Minecraft opened, there's just no way this can work. There also is a hermatrix.net Minecraft server, which isn't online, but when you enter a non-existing IP into Minecraft, it will just say that this is an unknown host. But with hermatrix.net, there comes this Java error message, which also comes when you try to connect to a server during its boot process. The help thing could be some sort of message. Maybe he's stuck in her matrix and can't get out.